Hi, I'm Joe Colasa. I'm a welding instructor at Lincoln Electric Welding School. We are here in uh, Cleveland, Ohio at the Lincoln Electric Corporate Headquarters. And I'm here to uh, help you with uh, some welding tips on cast iron. Most of the problems that we have with cast iron is due to its high carbon content. Uh, that creates cracking problems, which creates a lot of uh, thermal uh, control versus mild steel welding. In mild steel, you have very low carbon. Generally, they're classified as a 1015 or a 1020 carbon steel. And what that means is that their carbon content is around 0.20. In cast irons, cast irons have around 2 to 4% carbon with a lot of silicon. The more carbon content you add to your metals, the harder the steel gets. And the more carbon content you add to your metals, the stronger the steel gets. But also, it's very crack sensitive. So when we're working on anything of a cast iron with a very high carbon content, we have to start really following rules of welding and not just striking an arc on the material. I have an oxypropane set up here with Harris products. Then over here, I'm going to be using an ACDC 125-225 welder, and it's going to be set on DC positive, and I'm going to be running about 85 amps, and I'm going to be using a 1 8 nickel 55 soft weld electrode. Most of the time, there's several different ways you can repair castings. Uh, one of the ways is stick welding, then they make several different types of consumables. We make a ferro weld, we make a nickel 55 soft weld, and we also make a nickel 99 soft weld. The difference between them is, is that the ferro weld is basically a steel electrode designed to weld castings, but it will not be machinable. So if you have to do any machining, you have to not make sure you do ferro weld. Uh, the nickel 55 has a lower end nickel, which actually gives it more strength and thicker, thicker sections. And then the nickel 99 has almost 100% you know, nickel. And the reason for that is, is that it is a non-ferrous alloy which does not absorb any carbon into the weld, so it is very good for single pass welds, also for castings that need to be machined. So make certain that you're very aware of the selection of the material you are going to use to weld your casting. On this casting, I have an area that is ground out. This crack is in the casting, but it's not all the way through the casting. So first of all, I have to take a grinder, carbide, carbide drill, anything of that nature that can take and remove the material. And I'm going to V it out into around a 30 degree bevel. And I want to remove all of the crack. Once I get that done, I'll take and clean the material. And then I will have to take and add a preheat to the casting. And what that does is, is that the preheating in the casting will allow the casting not to cool very fast. Therefore, we're going to limit or hopefully not have any cracking problems. If I would just weld on this casting without any preheat, it would cool too fast. You would actually hear a slight pinging sound, which means it's cracking again. You have to control the preheating in the casting. So what we have here is a temple stick and the temple stick they are marked with Celsius and Fahrenheit, and they are various degrees that they melt at. So I am going to take and preheat this up, and when I touch the temple stick to the casting, when this melts means that that's when I can weld on the casting. It has enough heat into it to keep it from cracking. I also, if I'm going to limit myself in a parameter of thermal, I will take a 300 degree temple stick, 500 degree temple stick, and maybe have an 8 or 900 degree temple stick. And I can stay within that range of temperature to keep the casting as is where it doesn't get a lot of stresses. Therefore, when I'm done with the casting, I can take and slow cool. Either wrap the casting in a fireproof blanket and or put the casting in an oven and drop it down 50 degrees an hour. Generally, that'll allow the casting to stress relieve itself. However, we don't have all the options of doing that at home. So the best thing is, is you can bury it in sand if you have to. All we need to do is control the slow cooling of the casting. So one of the things that I do is, is I take and put charcoal in a grill, let it burn out. When I'm working on the casting, after the charcoal is burned out, I'll throw more charcoal in it. I'm done with the casting welding on it for two hours. I throw the casting in the charcoal grill and let it come down for two days and it's still warm when I get done. That's more or less something that we can do to control thermal care when we're trying to repair things at home. So what I'm gonna do right now is just show you the preheating technique that we do and how I actually use the temple sticks. And then I'm going to show you some of the techniques that we do welding.
Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to light the uh, oxypropane uh, torch system. And what I'm going to do is take and then preheat the casting. And while I'm preheating the casting, I'm going to take this temple stick and I'm going to start scraping it along the casting. And when it melts, that's when I can start doing my welds on the actual casting. So let's go ahead and light the torch here. As you noticed that I kept checking on the casting in different areas to make sure that the heat is localized. I want to make sure that everything is going into the casting at an even rate. Okay, I have my uh, welder set to go at 85 amps. I'm on DC positive. I am running, as I said before, the 1 8 nickel 55 soft weld. And before you proceed with your welding, you got to make certain of a few things. You want to make certain you have the right safety gear on. The safety gear that I'm wearing here are bigger heavy gloves. Make sure you have a correct helmet on. Make sure you cover your head so the sparks. Uh, you want to prevent yourself from getting burned. And most important, you want to make certain you have some way of eliminating the fume exposure. Right here I have a portable uh, fume extractor that I'm going to turn on before I weld. And it actually takes it away the fumes out of your breathing zone. So uh, make certain that you follow these instructions and also make certain you have your safety glasses on under the hood. Sparks can fly everywhere. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to start my beads in the casting. I'm going to weld approximately about one inch of weld. Then I'm going to stop welding, take my chip and hammer, clean the slag off, but at the same time, I'm actually doing what they call peening the weld. It's basically a mechanical type of stress leaving. What you can do is also use a very small ball peen hammer to do the same thing. But you want to make certain that you don't over peen the weld because you can reharden it. All we're doing is trying to relieve the stresses out of the weld. And then after I do that, I'm going to skip around on the casting itself and repeat the same procedure.
okay if you notice that when I was welding I kept skip welding take and take the chipping hammer and clean the slag off but at the same time I'm basically peening the weld and you want to stagger and stop your starts so as to localize the heating. So you're going to put a little bit of heat here, a little bit of heat here, a little bit here. A little bit. You're going to move it around so you don't get one area localized heating. So therefore you have a uniform bead. You're going to make very small beads. And you follow that sequence all the way out through welding to make sure until your casting is actually completed. Following these rules you should have quite a bit of success in your castings. If you'd like to learn anything more about the products that we use today, you can visit our website at linkelectric.com or you can come to our welding school in Cleveland, Ohio.